River later sent a manuscript to Amy to publish. Posing as a pulp detective novel, Melody Malone, private detective in old New York town, was actually River's memoir of the events leading up to Amy and Rory's exile into the past, and a guidebook for Amy, the 11th Doctor and Rory to use at that time. With the Doctor unable to approach New York at the risk of an even more catastrophic paradox, River asked Amy to write an afterword for the novel, as an open letter to the Doctor. In it, she told him that she and Rory both loved him and asked him not to travel alone. She explained that she and Rory were happy and lived in relative comfort. At the end of the afterward, Amy made two final requests of the doctor. The first was that he go back to the morning when he never came back for her, explain to her seven-year-old self that she would have to be patient and that it would be worth the wait. She asked him to tell her of the adventures they would share and that she would fall in love with a man who would wait 2,000 years to keep her safe. The second was that he should find a new companion because he should never be alone. River gave the royalties of the Melody Malone novel, and its prequel The Angel's Kiss, to Amy and Rory so they could buy a home in New York legitimately. In 1939 a pile of papyrus attached to a vortex manipulator appeared in their home, with instructions for Amy to turn the contents into a third Melody Malone novel, The Ruby's Curse, and have it delivered to River's New York home at a specific time. Not wanting to cause a paradox, Amy followed the instructions. She and Rory later met River who explained what had been going on. In light of her encounter with Melody, Amy suggested she take over the writing of the books now as River was too close to her subject, which River agreed to. Under her married name, Amelia Williams, Amy eventually wrote a multi-chapter children's book, Summer Falls. In 1946, she and Rory adopted a son, Anthony. By this time she had written at least one other book in the Melody Malone series. At some point, Amy wrote a famous book called The Night Thief of Ill Harbor. She lived on the third floor of a building in the Upper West Side at the time she was interviewed by Chrissy Allen in 1969, for the Brooklyn Fair. Amy revealed that she and Rory had just returned from a vacation to Florida and Washington, where they, watched, friends and family that were, having a rough time. She also stated that next book was going to be about a little girl who was lost on the streets of 1969 New York. Imagine that. Me. A crazy old bag lady wandering the streets of New York looking for a lost girl. But yes, I do go looking for her. Amy died at age 87 and was buried in New York, next to her husband, whom she outlived by five years.